Where's my purse? Welcome to the chaos, lovelies. And the chaos has been ramping up lately. When big things go wrong, they tend to happen in threes and all at once. We have weathered this one pretty well so far, and it was one of those times that just brought sudden clarity to certain things, and it helped soothe my soul a little bit. And I'm going to call this healing with huga. So huga is a strange word. It's even stranger if you see how it's spelled. <laughs> It's a Danish word, and I may be pronouncing it wrong. I don't know. It means the quality of coziness and comfortable conviviality that engenders a feeling of contentment or well-being. And it is also regarded as a defining characteristic of Danish culture. So I came across this idea early on in my podcasting. It was on my book podcast. I love words, and I love holidays, especially the warm, cozy, love-centered kind of holidays. And when I found this idea, I proposed celebrating our own version of Huga. It started during quarantine, during the holiday season, and it was kind of just a way to add a little more holiday spirit to the month. That was definitely a weird year, for sure, for more than one reason. But they loved it, and it immediately became a new family tradition. We play games, we eat yummy food, there are prizes for the games. We do early gifts, and everyone is just really chill and relaxed. And, you know, we take breaks in between so people can take naps. And it's a day where you just stay in your pajamas all day. And it's just so much fun. I love planning it, too. I always loved planning parties and play dates when my kids were little. And now that they're grown, it's even more fun, honestly. And plus, now Andy and I get to participate, too. And we're really just a couple big kids at heart especially at this time of year. (laughs) So this year, Huga has kind of overtaken Christmas, which honestly, I am so down with. (laughs) This holiday season has brought forward the amount of leftover bullshit trauma that I have around Christmas in particular. And when my family wanted to move Huga to Christmas Eve and put more emphasis on that day, I was more than happy to make the change. (laughs) I love having our own family-centered holiday. Huga is healing, for sure. (laughs) I'm still kind of amazed that I've gotten to this point. Healing seemed impossible when I began this entire destruction and rebuilding of myself. I'm just so incredibly grateful to be where I am, especially as I begin to accept myself and live a life that is more in line with my awesome neurospicy brain. It's been kind of a relief. So as I mentioned earlier, the chaos has been real lately. But after an emotional reset, I've been having kind of a spectacular week as far as the ADHD is concerned. I had extra stuff to do this past week, some stuff that I knew about and had planned for, like baking for the bake sale at the holiday concert, and then some other stuff like a flat tire and the main breaker to our house shorting out, which happened on the same day. Those were definitely not planned for. (laughs) It has taken some really focused action and continual positive self-talk to stay on task, but I feel like I have turned a major corner. I'm acting like I used to before everything kind of fell apart, but improved. I feel more like myself, and I am finally off my butt and moving around again. And it feels like it's been forever. (laughs) I do think that I needed my most recent depressed phase. It sucked. Bad. They always do. But surviving another one has left me feeling a little more together, maybe a little stronger. I really hate the saying that trauma makes you stronger. That shit is a blatant lie. It weakens you in so many ways. But getting through a tough time and handling my emotions throughout it, that is a major win huge. (laughs) The ADHD can definitely be a negative at times. I can get off task very easily, 
but I have started allowing myself to do what I call ADHD cleaning. You know, three or four tasks going at once, and as I get distracted and end up in a different room, I work on that task for a while until I get distracted and end up in a different room, and on and on. (laughs) Surprisingly, it all usually gets done, and sometimes it actually results in me doing more tasks than I had planned. I'm learning to work with it. This stuff is definitely not intuitive. I have spent my whole life trying to fight my weird brain and do things the quote-unquote right way. And now I struggle to allow myself to work with how my brain actually functions. What a trip this late diagnosis stuff is. (laughs) I sometimes feel like I'm discovering something new every day. Luckily, it has been mostly positive lately. (laughs) That's always nice. Anyway, I've got a couple of uplifting quotes for you. I love a good quote. First is from Francesca Riegler, who's an artist. Happiness is an attitude. We either make ourselves miserable or happy and strong. The amount of work is the same. And the second quote is from A.A. Milne, an author and poet. You're braver than you believe and stronger than you seem and smarter than you think. And that is all for this episode, lovelies. I hope you have a beautiful week. I hope you get to spend some time being warm and cozy with the people and pets that you love. I hope you get at least some of your cleaning done. And of course, I hope you find your purse. Media Production.